You know, there's this mythology about entrepreneurs that they have this single brilliant idea and then they, they rock it to success. Uh, yeah, we saw a different story uh, with you know, Apple's resurgence where it was a story of persistence. And I was so impressed this morning hearing from you, Mark, about your persistence in your vision for Ubuntu and how you've kept soldiering on when people thought Linux on the desktop wasn't going to go anywhere. And you're making it happen. Talk to us about what drives you to keep working at this vision. So I think you've done some work on um, on the sort of submarine open source economy. Yeah. You know, there, there are the highlights, but then the open source is sort of also everywhere. And that's really what fascinates me, right? We've got uh, vast amounts of, of, of open source Linux being used um, in a way that doesn't look anything like shrink-wrapped software from the past. Um, and, and, and that's what's powering the cloud, but it's also powering um, uh, all sorts of devices, you know, in an Internet of Things, all of that's going to run essentially free Linux. Um, and, and I guess what, what fascinates me is um, trying to give a name to that, trying to understand the economics and the, and the drivers and what will drive adoption, what, what will move the, the, the technology forward, um, and ultimately how we can wrap our arms around that and, and, and make it kind of useful and tractable to people. And that's, that's what Ubuntu is about. It's, it's useful and tractable on the desktop. It's useful and tractable um, in the cloud um, where, it, where it's sort of the majority of the stuff that's running on Amazon or HP or Rackspace is all Ubuntu. Um, and in future, perhaps also you know, on devices, um, invisible devices, things that, that are sensors or, or control systems, but also visible things, you know, smart screens of, of one form or another. And, and I just think that's fascinating. It's such an immediate connection to innovation um, that it's, uh, it's... Yeah, a lot of people doubted Linux on the desktop, but this new uh, Ultrabook from Dell just kind of blows away that notion. Uh, I, I guess two things have to happen. We, we had to get the design right. The experience had to be had to become great, um, so that it could go into any kind of market. Um, and and manufacturers had to find a story that they could tell. I think Dell, with the with the, with the Sputnik project, really has a fantastic story. The the reception you know, in the tubes has been incredible. Um, and, and the laptop is beautiful. Um, well, we see people, the people who have them here at OSCON have that, that magic uh, touch. You know, you see people clustered around them saying, I want to see this. Yeah, yeah. And that's always a great sign. So, so on this one, this is a four gig machine. It's the, it's the, the beauty. Um, and we spun up a 20 node uh, Mongo uh, database of a simulation. So like the DevOps story, the Juju yeah. story. There's 20 nodes simulated, you know, live there next right. to the development environment. Um, so the Beast, which will be you know, 8, 16 gig, uh, you know, you'll be able to simulate a very large production deployment for, for whatever kind of complex cloud environment or app you're, you're spinning up. Yeah, you know, and that's really a big contrast with um, Mac OS X, which is still so haltingly connected to you know, the cloud world. Right. You know, so you have kind of the, you know, the cloud world and then this, this client world, and you've really done an amazing job bringing the two together. Well, developers have shown they're not attached to Windows, right? They, they, they've adopted the MacBook Pro, and they're, they're sitting at a MacBook Pro and spinning up Ubuntu on the cloud. So with this story, you know, they get this completely seamless experience. They've got a beautiful environment on a beautiful laptop, and, uh, and it, it's a perfect simulation of what they're actually trying to achieve, which is production infrastructure in the cloud. Well, your demo here at OSCON was pretty impressive, where you were showing how you really have, with Juju, brought the cloud right onto the desktop, onto the laptop, so that you've got your, I think what you said was uh, uh, DevOps distilled. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, framing of what you're doing there. Can you talk a little bit about that? So, so Juju's DevOps distilled um, captures the idea that DevOps is all about um, automation, repetition, velocity. Um, and for us, uh, you know, in, in, looking at, in looking at how DevOps worked, we, we noticed there's an enormous amount of friction in moving from a development environment to a test environment to a production environment. There are often three completely different environments, totally different deployment tools and scripts and teams. Um, and so the handover process is very messy. You know, there's a new version of code from the app here. Um, getting that into test and getting that into production would involve lots of paper, lots of communication, mm -hmm. lots of meetings. Um, so we looked for ways to, to do two things. One was to 
um, essentially model the environment, simulate the cloud environment and the yeah. physical production in the developer environment. And the second was to encapsulate all the pieces um, so that they could be reused. If you if you walk around startup uh, offices, there's whiteboards everywhere, and they all have maps. And those maps are you know Hadoop connected to this, connected to that, connected yeah. to. Um, so we wanted to essentially make it so that each of the parts of those maps could be reused. Yeah, you know, Juju, Juju does that. It, what really strikes me is that people who look at the history of, say, Microsoft, uh, don't realize just what an important part of their success their tools were. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as we see the internet becoming the operating system, as I've been you know saying for many years, you know, there's this. Uh, pastiche of tools that have been developed. And you're really thinking systematically about how do we build this into a comprehensive developer tools environment. You know, and I, I think, uh, I, I'm just very impressed by that vision. There's that, there's that great picture of a, um, a Venn diagram that says, you know, this is what the CIO thinks is being used. This is what developers want to use. And then this is what's actually being used. And the overlap between what developers want to use yeah. and what's actually being used is much bigger than the overlap with you know, what the uh -huh. suite thinks is being used. And I think that's very important. You know, stay close to developers. Watch how they, watch what they want. How much do you keep your own hands dirty uh, in, in all this development? Um, well, I'm, 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 I'm interacting with developers all the time and trying to shape that into, into a story that we can tell. So, so today's demo you know, came from um, uh, watching lots of points of friction in EC2, experiencing some of them a little bit, uh, but I don't code uh, right. uh, much at all, um, only, only to sort of prove a point and then weekly. So. But you still, you have that, that Jobsian sense of really being in One the clicks. product, uh, in right. the product. Yeah. That's, there's an order of magnitude difference over there. But <laughs> well, we, we, what, what did Browning say? A man's reach must uh, exceed his grasp, or what's a heaven for? You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, having, or, or having, chasm, as it happens. Having, so, yeah. having something to aspire to is always good. Uh, but I think you've done a terrific job of, of driving this thing forward, you know? and, and as I said, persistence. So what makes you a guy who can do anything keep working on this? Um, it's this intersection of, of society, technology, um, and economics. Um, they're, they're intimately related. You know, you look at history and big changes in society, like how we organize ourselves as people, are often predicated on a, on a change that came just before that in technology, because suddenly something was new as possible. Um, and so, so, so that, that relationship is very interesting. And economics too, you know, um, uh, we, we assume something's impossible economically because it wasn't possible previously. But as technology changes, you know, the window of possibility slides. Um, and, and kind of trying to keep up with that wave is, is challenging. But uh, open source free software, um, as, as reflected inside something like Ubuntu, is, is a taste of, of, of the leading edge of, of that multidimensional curve. Well, that seems like a great place to finish. Thanks a lot, Mark, and thanks for what you do. Thanks for hosting everybody here. It's awesome.